You're listening to Uranium Spotlight, brought to you by PurePoint Uranium Group, your exploration partner in the most prolific areas of Canada's Athabasca Basin. With a collaborative investment model on district-scale projects and validation from industry leaders Cameco, Orano, and ISO Energy, PurePoint is investing in Canada's uranium future. And now your host, Chris Frostad. It's Tuesday, October 28th, and this week on Uranium Spotlight, spot prices ease after a volatile month. Conference speakers call for a nuclear decade, and new technology brings machine learning underground at Cigar Lake. The uranium spot price opened last week at $80.01 a pound, U308, and closed at $77.35, down roughly 3% as trading turned choppy. Prices drifted lower through Tuesday on thin activity before firming midweek when utilities stepped in to restock at lower levels. By Friday, bids were climbing again, lifting the daily average to $77.35. In total, 11 spot transactions were completed, representing about £750,000 U308, nearly all for prompt delivery. Traders described a tug-of-war between buyers seeking bargains and sellers holding firm around the mid-$70 range. By Monday, bids had stabilized near $77.50, suggesting that the recent correction may have run its course. The long-term price rose to $84 a pound, up $2 for the month, confirming that utility contracting remains the stronger buyer of fundamentals. Conversion and enrichment prices were unchanged but continue to reflect tight capacity. For investors, the key takeaway is that physical tightness is still very real, even when the spot tape wobbles. The contracting pipeline continues to expand, underlining that the market's next leg up will be built on term demand rather than day-to-day volatility. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to Uranium Spotlight podcast, available on your favorite podcast platform or on PurePoint Uranium's YouTube channel. Two major events dominated the industry calendar last week, the T.D. Cowan Nuclear Fuel Conference in the United States and the Canadian Nuclear Association West Conference in Saskatoon. Together, they painted a clear picture of an industry entering a new growth phase. At the TD Cowan gathering, Cameco's Grant Isaac observed that uranium demand continues to be understated while supply is routinely overstated. Delays, restarts, and ramp-ups rarely meet their targets, meaning the real availability of material is far below headline guidance. Michael Alkin of Satcham Cove agreed, suggesting that prices may need to reach $125 to $150 a pound, before new production is properly incentivized. Speakers such as Arthur Hyde and John Campanella from Segra Capital and Sprott Physical Uranium Trust emphasized how the investor base itself is changing. Generalist and technology sector funds, once indifferent to uranium, are now entering the space seeking both value and growth exposure. According to Campanella, nuclear and uranium ETFs are now attracting more inflows than renewable energy ETFs a reversal few would have predicted just two years ago. The discussion repeatedly circled back to a single theme. The market is broadening. Nuclear energy is no longer viewed solely through a mining sector lens, but as a central pillar of the energy transition and increasingly of industrial policy. Speakers noted that inventories are at historic lows and that a wave of utility contracting could emerge as uncovered demand collides with limited available supply. Meanwhile, in Saskatoon, the Canadian Nuclear Association West Conference sold out within days of opening, its first time ever in Saskatchewan. Cameco CEO Tim Gitzel told delegates that uranium had fallen out of favour for a decade, but is roaring back into public consciousness. Saskatchewan Premier Scott Moe unveiled a new provincial energy roadmap that positions the province's uranium production at the centre of Canada's nuclear renaissance, calling Saskatchewan an energy supplier to the world. Other panels examined workforce training, supply chain opportunities, and regulatory coordination for emerging jurisdictions in Western Canada. Sask Power announced a $10 million investment in nuclear workforce development at universities to build the talent base required for SMR development. For investors, this matters because it confirms that momentum is now institutional. Utilities, governments, and investors are aligned in viewing uranium not as a speculative metal, but as a strategic fuel. The message from both conferences was unambiguous. The decade ahead will be nuclear-driven, and those positioned early will stand to benefit. While policy momentum dominated the stage, a quieter revolution is unfolding underground. 
Cameco has begun applying machine learning models to optimize production at its high-grade Cigar Lake mine in northern Saskatchewan. In partnership with Saskatchewan Polytechnic's Digital Integration Center of Excellence, the company used artificial intelligence algorithms to refine the jet boring system that carves cavities in uranium ore bodies with high-pressure water. By training models on real-time data, the system can automatically ingest water pressure, nozzle rotation, and timing to maximize ore recovery and reduce waste. The result, what once took a day, can now be done in 15 minutes. Lead researcher Nathan Kozicki, now an engineer at the mine, said the system doesn't eliminate skilled workers. It replaces the tedious parts of the job and helps Cameco make better decisions faster. Director Dr. Terry Peckham added that the project is as much about knowledge transfer as technology, positioning Saskatchewan as a global hub for mining innovation. Cigar Lake currently produces around 18 million pounds of U308 a year, making it one of the world's largest uranium mines. Enhancements like this could meaningfully expand output without additional infrastructure, further improving Cameco's cost base and environmental performance. For investors, this development highlights how innovation is quietly reshaping the production landscape. Efficiency gains achieved through automation and AI reduce cost, extend mine life, and reinforce Canada's reputation for technological leadership in uranium extraction. In an industry where new greenfield projects take years to permit, smarter mining is becoming the fastest route to incremental supply. And that wraps up your Uranium Spotlight coverage for this week. For more news and events from the world of uranium, please tune in next week to Uranium Spotlight. You've been listening to Uranium Spotlight, your weekly podcast dedicated to delivering the latest news and events shaping the uranium fuel market and its critical role in the global energy landscape. Brought to you by PurePoint Uranium Group. PurePoint actively operates a portfolio of advanced uranium projects in the world's richest uranium district and has established partnerships with industry leaders. While our passion for this subject is undeniable, it's essential to clarify that the information presented here is not investment advice. Instead, our goal is to offer an unbiased and comprehensive review of recent events that could impact uranium prices. Join us again next Tuesday for Uranium Spotlight.